Jemmy and I are going to speak for the next 40 minutes, taking about 20 minutes each, talking about our interpretations of treatment regimens for neovascular AMD. I personally think this is the hardest thing that we have to take on in using intravitreous injections, because in diabetic macular edema, we have some very straightforward, excellent outcomes with very good regimens. In macular degeneration, the treatment strategies are another thing. These are my disclosures, which include grants to Johns Hopkins University from various companies that are working on treatments for neovascular AMD. It's no problem figuring out what to do initially. You start with anti-VEGF when you're treating choroidal neovascularization in macular degeneration. For me, the challenge is, what do you do after that first injection? Which follow-up regimen do you do? And I'm just going to talk about the first two years. It's even harder thereafter, but I'm just going to take 20 minutes on the first two years. And I want to discuss what we know from large randomized trials. That's not our only evidence, but that's the evidence with the least bias that gives us the strongest confidence that we should at least consider it when we're applying treatment for our patients. This is a summary of all that I'm going to talk about. There's monthly dosing. That was shown to work in Marina and Anchor, in View 1 and View 2, and in CAT. That involved 12 visits in year one, 12 visits in year two, 12 doses in year one, and 12 doses in year two. Then there's treat and extend. That has fewer average visits than this monthly dosing, nine visits in year one instead of 12. Fewer average doses, nine doses in year one instead of 12 monthly. So just put those numbers in perspective. What about a fixed schedule but less than monthly dosing? This was what, is, what was done in view one and view two. That has eight visits and eight doses in year one. That's good. But notice it has 12 visits in year two and six doses in year two. That's just a summary. And finally, there's treat as needed, or PRN, with monthly monitoring. That's what was done in CAT. 24 visits over two years, but it has the fewest average doses of all of these regimens. It has eight doses in year one, seven doses in year two. Those are the facts. Let's go back and look at this. We're going to go to the beginning, when Marine and Anchor were the first studies looking at monthly dosing for neovascular AMD, and the great thing was it worked. These are the original slides at one and two years, which showed that most people avoided substantial vision loss. 90 to 95 percent avoided losing 15 or more letters, three or more lines, compared to our standard in Anchor, it was photodynamic therapy, where only two-thirds avoided this vision loss. The big difference was that this showed us that you could actually gain vision. When you walked in with neovascular AMD, about 30 to 40 percent over two years actually gained three or more lines of vision. Compared with photodynamic therapy, it was about 5 percent, one out of 20 instead of about 40 percent. And this shows you the changes over time to support that. There were similar outcomes that were seen with monthly aflibercept in the VIEW1 and VIEW2 trials and with monthly bevacizumab in the CAT trial, at least through two years. So that's monthly treatment. It works great. It avoids substantial vision loss, and about 30 to 40 percent have substantial vision gain. So that was great, except the problems. It drains the resources. These are frequent visits coming in 24 times, substantial costs of the exam, ancillary testing. There are risks associated, mainly ocular, not systemic. And the solution that everybody had in the world was let's decrease the burden. Those are great results. Let's just reduce the visits and reduce the number of injections. And that will take care of those problems. It sure will. It'll reduce the injection number. It'll reduce the drug-related adverse events. The question is, are there risks to doing that? Do you erode those visual acuity benefits that I just showed you with monthly treatment of a aflibercept, bevacizumab, or ranibizumab? So the first thing was, let's try a fixed dosing, but let's reduce the number of regimens or injections, one of the things that was tried was the peer visit. That didn't work. That was going every three months. Another strategy was in view one and view two with the flebercept. That was going every two months. And that would give us either six or eight annual injections and visits. This was peer. Going every three months didn't work. 
because when you went every three months, for the first three months, there was a gain in vision, but then going every three months out to a year, the average no longer was there. And what that translated to was not 30 to 40 percent gaining three or more lines of vision, only about 10 percent gaining three or more lines of vision. So that's better than no treatment. That's better than photodynamic therapy, but it's not as good as monthly treatment. So going every three months with ranibizumab was not necessarily a good idea. It did reduce the number of injections. It did reduce the number of visits, but there was a cost in terms of the vision. So do you want to give up the chance of improving vision for your patient? The EXCITE study looked at this as well in ranibizumab, but had a control group instead of just one arm to compare to historical controls, and it showed the same thing, that the blue line with monthly treatment was superior to going every three months that we see in the orange line. And so these oscillations that we see on OCT were associated with a gradual loss of vision by going every three months. So the VIEW trial was different. Not only did it use a different agent, a Flebercep, but in reducing the number of injections, it tried every two months, not every three months. And with every two months, if we integrate the data, we see that we get eight injections. Why is that? Because it's not exactly every two months. It's three monthly injections followed by every two months in the first year. That's eight injections and eight visits. That's good. But the second year is not eight visits. It's 12 visits. Why is that? Because in the second year, the strategy was, let's only treat as often as every three months. But what if there's a problem? What if somebody starts to leak or starts to get activity? So let's see them monthly. So that's 12 visits, but let's treat them at least every three months and maybe less often as well. So in the second year, there were monthly visits, but you could treat them at a capped interval of at least three months. If somebody needed it monthly, then every month. If they needed it every other month, then every other month. But at the least, they would get it every three months. And with that, if you look at the integrated data, you can see that there's very little decline by doing monthly visits and catching those cases that might need more than every three-month treatment and otherwise at least every three months. So this gave us a fixed schedule with less than monthly dosing. Eight visits and doses in the first year, 12 visits and six doses in the second year. And that's how we get with this reduced dosing and visit schedule, 20 total visits over two years, 14 total doses. What about PRN? This was looked at in detail in the CAT study. This is a reactive approach. And in this reactive approach that was done in CAT, you see them monthly. So that you monitor them every month in the first two years in order to determine, do you need treatment or do you not need treatment based on activity every month? And there's no reduction in visits if you're going to see them every month, but it allows you to determine who needs 24 injections, who needs 15 injections over two years, who needs five injections over two years. And so these are the data with ranibizumab showing that it was non-inferior, while the monthly line is slightly ahead of the PRN line. It's not a substantial difference that was judged to be clinically relevant. And even out to two years, the monthly line on top and the as-needed line with ranibizumab, which is the second line, was shown to be non-inferior. It's likely not a clinically relevant difference. The bottom lines, though, are with bevacizumab. And with bevacizumab, if you go PRN, we don't have strong evidence to be confident that the differences are not clinically relevant. We worry that with bevacizumab, if you go PRN, they are clinically relevant differences. And so with bevacizumab, while it costs less in macular degeneration to get non-inferior results, we don't have any evidence you can do anything other than monthly visits with monthly injections for the first two years. So where are we so far? We have fixed monthly doses. You could use a Flebercep, Bevacizumab, or Ranibizumab for at least two years. And it works great. 30 to 40 percent will improve, not everyone. And only about 5 to 10 percent will lose vision. Those are great results. But of course, we wanted to reduce the burden. So what was tried? Fixed monthly doses with a Flebercept. Three doses followed by every other month for at least a year. And then a capped PRN regimen where they were seen monthly 
for at least an additional year with treatment at least every three months, more often if at those monthly visits you saw more activity. And we have as needed, or PRN, with ranibizumab with fixed monthly visits for at least two years. Now, it's unknown whether any of these regimens should be continued indefinitely. We actually have very little data to know about these regimens beyond two years. And that's something sorely needed around the world. And I'm hoping some of these networks around the world will begin to work on how do we treat these, because everybody thought we'd have something that we know works beyond two years, but there's really no data out there. Now, what I didn't mention yet are the details, except on my introductory slide, on treat and extend. This is the most common regimen that people say they use. I don't know what necessarily they're using, but they say that this is what they're using. It's a proactive approach where you continue to see the person and treat them until they're dry or there's no VEGF activity. And then you extend, often by two weekly intervals, as long as they stay dry, typically no more than every 12 weeks, although you might consider going longer. And then once it re relapses or you have more activity, you might shrink the time down again until it's dry, and then extend the time again as long as it stays dry. Now, if you go to the ASRS PAT survey, the Canadian PAT survey, this is the most popular treatment regimen by far. But is the evidence very strong? Until actually this year, we didn't have any non-randomized clinical trial data. So again, we had data, but they're fraught with potential bias, retrospective case series, prospective case series with no comparisons. So comparisons to historical controls of monthly PRN or other fixed dosing regimens. And they all suggested fewer visits, fewer injections, and comparable vision outcomes. But let's now look at what the randomized clinical trials say to try and get rid of that bias. The first got a lot of attention. It was published in the Ophthalmology Journal in September 2015 because it was the first randomized trial looking at monthly treatment compared with a treat and extend regimen. But actually, only 20 participants got monthly treatment. 40 participants got a treat and extend regimen. And by two years, we could not say confidently, because it's such a small study, if indeed the treat and extend regimen was no different or no substantial clinically relevant difference from the monthly treatment. And if you look in detail, you can see that by two years, there were 18 eyes still being followed on monthly treatment, only 23 of the 40 eyes being followed on the treat and extend regimen. So almost half of the eyes are missing. Did they do well? Would they improve the results? Did they do poorly? Would they worsen results? We don't know. We do know that of those 23 eyes, 13% of them had lost three or more lines of vision not seen in the monthly regimen. And interestingly, 55% had some serious adverse event. So the best information on treat and extend actually just came out this year in the TREND study. This looked at monthly ranibizumab compared with a treat and extend or a TREX regimen. This had 650 study participants. The best corrected visual acuity change from baseline was similar. It was a little less in the treat and extend arm, but we were pretty confident that that's not a likely a, a clinically relevant difference. 8% in each group lost 10 or more letters. That's about where you want it. At two years, I don't know what that means at one year. 6% in the treat and extend arm, 4% in the monthly arm lost 15 or more letters. That's a pretty good outcome. So for the first time, we were confident that a treat and extend regimen was likely not clinically relevantly different from a monthly regimen. But that's the first time we got it. What were the injections? Well, there were 11 in the monthly because on average people missed one visit, even though they were supposed to get 12. In the treat and extend regimen, it was nine. So how much did all of that effort reduce the injections? It reduced them by two. That's good. It's not 11, it's nine. It's not a big difference. You want to think about that if you're going to begin to explain to your patients, oh, I want to do a treat and extend regimen because I want to reduce the number of injections. 
Well, make sure you put it in context that our best evidence suggests it does reduce it, at least in the first year, by two. And what about the visits? There were 11 monthly visits out of 12 because on average people missed one over the year. How about reducing the number of visits with a treat and extend regimen? It did go down to nine. So make sure, again, that you're aware of the magnitude. People had in mind that they were going to greatly reduce the visits and injections. These are the data. It does reduce it, not substantially so. These were the data showing that the visual acuity likely is not substantially different, but you do see the bottom line, which is the treat and extend jumping up and down there, but not necessarily a big difference, and not a lot of eyes could go more than eight weeks without an injection. There were some. The question is, in these few eyes that went to every 12 weeks, how would they have done if you were using an as-needed regimen? Maybe if you just treated if there was activity, you don't treat when they're dry like in Treat and Extend, but only when there's activity, maybe they wouldn't need treatment as well. So let's go back to what I showed you on the first slide, but break it down a little more. Treat and Extend regimen. How many visits in the first year? Nine. How many treatments? Nine. How many visits in the second year? I don't know. If we guess that it's the same, if we just guess that it's the same, then it would be 18 average visits and 18 injections. What do we know about fixed visits and fixed dosing, where we try to reduce it as in view one and view two? Eight visits, eight treatments in the first year. It's not every other month because there's three monthly injections at first. 12 visits, six injections in the second year, 20 average visits instead of 24, 14 average injections instead of 24, as needed from the CAT study. 12 visits in the first year, eight treatments. 12 visits in the second year, seven treatments. 24 visits, so more visits on average, not a lot more, but some, just as few injections as with the fixed dosing regimen that you see in view one and view two, but perhaps you have the opportunity to identify who maybe only needs 12 injections, who maybe needs six. And so that's what you get with PRN, you can't get with fixed dosing. And all of that is compared to our gold standard, the monthly regimen. Now beyond year two, we don't have any guidance. We have 13 years of using anti-VEGF agents for neovascular AMD and no information really to guide us as to what to do beyond two years. So it's just our judgment based on these first two years. And maybe whatever the survey says. Thank you very much.